I know what some of you are automatically thinking, a video about Facebook, who cares, but just stick with me for a minute. Just hold on. Facebook has swelled to the point where they have more than 2 billion users a month and growing. That's a large, significant chunk of the planet. The average person spends 50 minutes a day on Facebook every day. That's six hours a week. And I'm pretty sure that number is also growing. I personally would love to dump Facebook, but it remains a place where we can easily share our work, so that is why we stay on it. We have a minimal interaction on Facebook, and people get mad because we don't check our messages and we don't do all this stuff, because we know what Facebook is, and I'm about to explain to you what it is. But even if I did dump Facebook at this point, it's affecting our lives anyway, and I'm going to give you one small example. We know several couples who are right now expecting babies, and one of those couples only announced it on Facebook to friends and family, so if we didn't get on Facebook that day or we didn't go check on their thing, we would not know, and we didn't know, and all these months went by, missed the baby shower, all that kind of stuff, because I don't, I don't do Facebook, really, and so we just didn't know, so... It's getting to the point now where Facebook is affecting our lives because we don't use it. Because so many other people do. Do you see what I'm saying? Well, now it's all coming out in everyone's face, probably because at this point, it's not going to change anything anyways. But you have these high-ranking Facebook officials, including co-creator Sean Parker, telling everybody flat out in not mincing words at all, People are literally being programmed by Facebook. First, we have Parker. Just, you know what, just listen to this. Um, and they would say, you know, I'm not on social media. And I would say, okay, <laughs> you know, you will be. And then they would say, they would say, no, 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 no. I value my real life interactions. I value the moment. I value presence and I value intimacy. And I would say, well, you're a conscientious objector. That's okay. You don't have to participate, but you know, we'll get you eventually. <clears throat> and, and, and like, I don't know if I really understood the consequences of what I was saying. <laughs> because it, the, un, the unintended consequences of, 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 a, of a network when it grows to a billion or two billion people, and it, and it, begin, and it, it literally changes your relationship with society, with each other, with, you know, it, 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 it probably interferes with productivity in weird ways. It, God only knows what it's doing to, to our children's brains. You know, if the, if the thought process that went into building these applications, Facebook being the first of them to really understand it, that thought process was all about how do we consume as much of your time and conscious attention as possible. And that means that we need to sort of give you a little dopamine hit every once in a while um, because someone liked or commented on a photo or a post or whatever. And that's going to get you to contribute more content and that's going to get you, you know, more likes and comments. I mean, it's, a, it's, a val it's a social validation feedback loop. I mean, it's exactly the kind of thing that a that a hacker like myself would come up with because you're exploiting a vulnerability in, in human psychology. It bears repeating. He's saying, Facebook puts people into a social validation feedback loop, a dopamine-driven social validation feedback loop. It has a reaction with people's brains that changes the way that they interact. Not only that, but he went on to say, they did it consciously. And I just... I, th I think that we, you know, we, the inventors, creators, you know, and it's, it's me, it's Mark, it's the, you know, Kevin Systrom and Instagram, it's all of these people, um, understood this consciously, and we did it anyway. That's right. They knew they were doing this to people, and they did it anyways. We need to sort of give you a little dopamine hit every once in a while. It's a, val it's a social validation feedback loop. Um, understood this consciously, and we did it anyway. And he's just telling everyone. I guess maybe he's assuaging his guilt. I don't know. But they did this to people on purpose. A few weeks after Parker made his statement, you have this guy 
whose name I'm probably going to butcher, unfortunately, Chamath Palahapitiya. Does that sound right? Palahapitiya. He worked on Facebook from 2005 to 2011 and ended up with the title Vice President of User Growth. And he came out after Sean Parker came out and he doubled down on what Parker said, saying, quote, I think we've created tools that are ripping apart the social fabric of how society works. Direct quote. I feel tremendous guilt. Um, I, think we, I think we all knew in the back of our minds, even though we feigned this whole line of like, there probably aren't any really bad unintended consequences. I think in the back, deep, deep recesses of our minds, we, we kind of knew something bad could happen. But I think the way we defined it was not like this. It literally is a point now where I think we have created tools that are ripping apart the social fabric of how society works. That is truly where we are. But hold on, we gotta finish listening to this guy. The short-term dopamine-driven feedback loops that we have created are destroying how society works. No civil discourse, no cooperation, misinformation, mistruth, and it's not an American problem. This is not about Russian ads. This is a global problem. These are not just innocuous pastimes. That's the thing. People just think this is a way to spend their time. It's not, and they're telling you straight up. He continued. We are in a really bad state of affairs right now, in my opinion. It is, it is eroding the core foundations of how people behave by and between each other. Have you ever tried to talk to a person when they're on Facebook or Twitter? You can't. It's like the person's not really there. They're physically there, you can see them, but mentally, there's, there might as well be a gone fishing sign across their forehead. They're not there. And it's getting worse. It's like people are just disappearing. Um, and I don't have a good solution. You know, my solution is I just don't use these tools anymore. I haven't for years. My Facebook feed, I probably haven't, I've posted maybe two times in seven years. Three times, five times, like just, it's less than 10. Um, and it's weird, I guess I kind of just innately didn't want to get programmed. But everybody else has to soul search a little bit more about what you're willing to do because your behaviors, you don't realize it, but you are being programmed. So this is now two high-ranking Facebook officials, including the guy who co-created it, saying this is meant to program people. Now you gotta decide how much you're willing to give up, how much of your intellectual independence. And don't think, oh yeah, not me, I'm a genius, I'm at Stanford. You're probably the most likely to fall for it. Because <laughs> you were checkboxing your whole life. No offense, guys. None taken. Look at this man's face. These people are laughing at him like this is a funny joke. He is not kidding. He's serious. He's been serious this whole time. And these people out in the audience are just like, ha ha ha, Facebook. They're, they're totally, it's going over. It's like right over their head, like an airplane, just they're missing it. They're not obviously getting it, what he's trying to tell them here. And he's being pretty straightforward, actually. And when he talked about his kids, you know what he told the Stanford crowd? I can control my decisions, which is I don't use this shit. Um, I can control my kids' decisions, which is they're not allowed to use this shit. Straight up, my kids are not allowed to use it. And this is a good point that everyone needs to understand. Because I think even the people who realize Facebook is bad and they call it spy book and they say, oh, they just want to get all your information. That is true. Parker said they just want to keep you on there as long as possible so you'll give up as much information about yourself as possible. Right? But... He refers to himself as a hacker. He says, a hacker like me is exploiting your psychology or whatever. But what does he really mean? He says it in a real strange way. But what does that actually mean when you think about what the words that are actually coming out of this guy's mouth? He's a hacker. What is it that he's hacking if he's exploiting human psychology? You're exploiting a vulnerability in, in human psychology. You, he's hacking you. And he's telling everyone that's what they did. They hacked us. And he's admitting it. It's pretty amazing, actually. You're not just giving something out to Facebook. You're also getting something back. That's how a feedback loop works. So it's not just you giving up all of your personal information and what you had for breakfast today. Something else is coming back to you. And that's the programming. 
A lot of people are unaware of how programming works or why they call it programming, but it's, it's, they mean it literally. In one of the first articles I wrote at True Stream Media back in 2013, back when we had time to keep up with the website and we weren't trying to finish this film, I ran down how this man named Herbert Krugman, who worked at General Electric, he was the corporate manager of public opinion research there. He did a bunch of studies in the late 60s on the effect of television programming, because they also call television program. remember they called a TV program, television programming. In these studies, he looked at what this programming does to people's brains when they watch it. And he had a paper titled, The Impact of Television Advertising, Learning Without Involvement. Learning Without Involvement. And he said, quote, there's a myth in the advertising world that viewers will forget your message if you don't repeat your advertising often enough. It is this myth that supports many large advertising expenditures. I would rather say that the public comes closer to forgetting nothing they have seen on TV. They just put it out of their minds until and unless it has some use. And then the response to the commercial continues. I'm sorry, Dave. So once you've experienced something, whether it's on a movie screen, a TV screen, a computer screen, a smartphone screen, your brain isn't just desensitized to that information. You have now effectively learned that information. This is the construct. And maybe not consciously, but your brain remembers that information forever. So why programming? Well, it seems to me that it works like this. Your brain doesn't just process all of the information coming in from your senses and then use the sum of all that information taken in to make decisions and react to the reality around you on a continuous basis all day long. But when it makes those decisions for you, your brain also is now filtering through everything you've seen on TV and movies, on the news, and whatever effect, conscious or subconsciously, that that information has had on you personally. I think this is part of why people have such bad relationships because they think that their relationship is supposed to be like what it is on TV. And so they fight about things that probably have nothing to do with their actual real life. It's based on their perception that they now have been programmed with by watching, I don't know, whatever, romantic comedies or soap operas or whatever. I'm trying to just explain in a very basic sense programming so that when we hear somebody like Sean Parker say Facebook is programming us, we kind of have at least a basic idea of what he's saying. This is this concept that I'm talking about is what makes technologically driven propaganda especially effective because we're doing it to ourselves. And let's face it, the majority of our society, like I said, gets a whole lot of their opinions fed to them by the TV and by the Internet now and places like Facebook. Here's an example specifically Facebook related. So on my Facebook wall in recent weeks, I've noticed that it goes through peculiar phases. For example, after the mass, the last mass shooting, we just keep having all these mass shootings. I can't even keep it straight how many mass shootings we've had now. But after the last mass shooting, I noticed there were a whole bunch of posts sponsored and otherwise promoting gun control, even though I know for a fact that people I'm friends with, the core group of people on there are constitutionalists at the very least, libertarians, voluntary anarchists, people who do not agree the government should limit the Second Amendment rights. So why is that stuff showing up on there? I think it's because I posted something about gun control and how they're using all of these things to push gun control. Another week, it was a bunch of posts just generally ragging on conspiracy theorists and hoaxers and trying to conflate the, the term false flag with the word hoax and all this kind of stuff and basically pushing the idea that anyone who discusses false flags is a tinfoil nut job. There was another week where I definitely posted something about pet vaccines, and then all of a sudden on my home wall the next day, I had all these posts about crazy anti-vaxxers. In this way, it really seems to me that at the very least, Facebook is being used to correct people's politically incorrect opinions based on whatever the agenda of the system is. <laughs> and it's not just doing that. According to Sean Parker, it's merging it with a Pavlovian conditioned response through a dopamine-driven social validation feedback loop. Again, two billion people a month use this and the average person spends six hours a week on it. So that's six hours a week of social programming. Bad actors can now manipulate large swaths of people 
to do anything you want. And and if you don't if you don't see what I'm trying to say at this point, I'm going to go ahead and reiterate again as I've said in past videos that Facebook has admitted to carrying out social research on its users. Facebook secretly conducted a massive psychological experiment on nearly 700,000 users, which is part of what happens when you sign up for Facebook. You give your consent to being part of these things. It's buried in the user agreement. You automatically opt in to being a guinea pig for Facebook's social research, and they don't have to tell you first when they're gonna do something. They just do it. Every user essentially grants the social network permission to conduct these kinds of experiments when they create their accounts. If you're using Facebook, you're part of that. You don't have a say. You cannot opt out. There's no opting out. Because besides just getting all this information on everyone, that's also just the point of Facebook. And they've done these studies and they've admitted and they've released it to the public and they've said, look, we, we found we can turn people's moods up and down by purposefully loading your Facebook wall with either good or bad news. If they fill someone's wall with positive information, it'll garner a positive response from the user, right? But conversely, if they put a bunch of negative stuff on there that upsets you, it's gonna make you upset and put you in a bad mood and then the stuff you post is gonna be negative stuff. Which again, even that might not seem like a big deal to some people, but you need to think about it in terms of two billion people are using this a month and many of them are using it for six hours a week. And I guess that'd be bad enough by itself. To me, to me by itself, that's bad enough, okay? That is bad enough if Facebook stays in its current form. Now, add the fact that Facebook hired former Google and DARPA agent Regina Dugan, who came out last year. She was hired for their top secret Building 8 project. Well, she came out last year and announced what that is. Facebook is attempting to create a mind reading device so its users can think their Facebook posts directly into the platform without having to type anything. So what if you could type directly from your brain? It sounds impossible, but it's closer than you may realize. Now, to be clear, we are not talking about decoding your random thoughts. That might be more than any of us care to know. We're talking about decoding those words, the ones you've already decided to share by sending them to the speech center of your brain. In a few years time, we expect to demonstrate a real time silent speech system capable of delivering 100 words per minute. So tell me that's not like a cross between the Borg. Your culture will adapt to service us. Resistance is futile. An invasion of the body snatchers and that scene out of SpongeBob movie where they put the mind control bucket helmets on everyone. Which I get it. I use these clips all the time, guys. But you know what? I only show these clips so much on this channel because it's just so fitting to what is actually happening right now. This is the reality that we are now living in. And now they're just openly admitting it. Now they're just openly, blatantly telling everyone in their face that that's what they're doing. And instead what it really is, is fake brittle popularity. That's short term and that leaves you even more, and admit it, vacant and empty before you did it. Because then it forces you into this vicious cycle where you're like, what's the next thing I need to do now? Think about that compounded by two billion people. And then think about how people react then to the perceptions of others. It's just a, it's a really bad. It's really, really bad. And, you know, I, I'm, I, it's great that Sean Parker claims he feels guilty or whatever, but this is the same as handing out a bunch of crack and then waiting 14 years until everyone's good and addicted to crack and then going, oh, hey, I'm sorry about that. Uh, that crack is actually really bad for your mind and it's affecting the way that you interact socially. I, I didn't mean to give you that, Chris. Sorry about that. I should have probably warned you about that 14 years ago. Once again, things that could have been brought to my attention yesterday! Nope, they did it consciously. They're consciously programming everyone. Consciously? And we did it anyway. People make jokes about the global hive mind, but have you seen the Facebook logo that Mark Zuckerberg wears on the inside of his hoodie? This hoodie thing with Mark Zuckerberg, by the way, happened at the D8 conference which is referred to as the Ultra Lux All Things Digital Conference. It's one of those conferences that is attended by people like Zuckerberg and Google's Eric Schmidt and DARPA's Regina Dugan that I mentioned earlier and Microsoft and all those people, they come to this thing every year. 
Well, the following year at the D9 conference, they gave out an, another hoodie as a callback to this Mark Zuckerberg hoodie moment in the swag bag. And this time it had an upside down pentagram on it with a goat's head in it inside of an all seeing eye pyramid with the eye being a girl's head with a smartphone or something over one of her eyes as if her new eye will now be this camera or this cell phone or whatever that's gonna be the new intermediary between her outside reality and her brain and a Latin phrase that CNET claims roughly means, I cease blabbering and pay attention. Yeah, of course, because who's actually paying attention? Obviously not that many, it's not that many people. Definitely not the people who spend the equivalent of a full-time shift at a job on Facebook every week. And the people running this, they know that. They know that people aren't paying attention and they can act like this whole thing is just a big joke. Ha ha, little Satanism, funny, funny. But is it when they just keep using biblical references? Apple, the personal computer. The Latin phrase they put on there is stop talking and pay attention. The world is getting weird fast. And that weirdness is only going to accelerate in the coming years with billions of people being exposed on a continuous basis to internet driven programming. I just don't see what the difference is between this really and those Cold War experiments they did with the rats who were getting brain stimulation by pushing a pedal and they would just keep pushing the pedal and pushing the pedal and pushing the pedal. They got the rat to do it to themselves. And I don't see what the difference is here really. It's, it, to me this is based on the exact same type of situation. And I guess the only question I have left about all this stuff is who do you think warned us better about the society we're living in today? Do you think it was George Orwell, Aldous Huxley, or the Bible? Anyway, I guess I just felt the need to say all that because I saw that and I just, people do not understand the scope and gravity of what's happening right now. There's a reason that I have said many times, it's World War I, World War II, WWW. Anyway, I love you guys, and I gotta get back to finishing this movie now. You're exploiting vulnerability in, in human psychology. The short-term dopamine-driven feedback loops that we have created are destroying how society works. That is truly where we are. It literally changes your relationship with society, with each other. It is eroding the core foundations of how people behave by and between each other. But everybody else has to soul search a little bit more about what you're willing to do because your behaviors, you don't realize it, but you are being programmed. If you feed the beast, that beast will destroy you. If you push back on it, we have a chance to control it and rein it in. And it is a point in time where people need to hard break from some of these tools.